the IAP portal isn't only valuable for teachers. It's an important source of information for boards of trustees and school managers. NAG 5.1 states that boards of trustees are required to provide a safe physical and emotional environment for students. That includes safe aquatic areas and an effective aquatic program. And WaterSafe Auckland has developed the WaterSafe guidelines for schools to help boards in that process. Of course, the guidelines can be found on the IAP site. Henderson South School is one school that has very successfully followed a school and community-wide program to promote safe aquatics. The starting point was an ongoing lack of participation in the school's aquatic program over a number of years. When I talked to the staff, they seemed to say, yeah, well, we haven't had so many children coming as we'd like. Um, so we decided to try to make up an action plan for that and approach it in a way that we can really find out some results of yeah, what was happening. A survey of parents and children painted the picture of a community which did not engage extensively in water recreation, and that most experience was in local pools. It revealed a lack of confidence about water and a lot of misconceptions about swimming at school. For instance, parents thought that their children might contract nits in the pool, or that the child's glue ear might be exacerbated. As a consequence, the school undertook to improve its communication with the community around the aquatics program. This included ensuring parents knew what day their children were expected to swim and providing information to combat health concerns. The school also decided to specifically target the families of students who were regular non-participants. And that was just with the teachers who took it on themselves to monitor and, and just tick off when the students were coming to school and taking part in the sessions that they had. And if there were children that weren't participating, we would contact the parents and say, look, what's happening, we've noticed this child is not being part of the aquatics programme. And really putting the emphasis on that it's an important part, just like reading or writing, it's part of the curriculum, it's part of what they need to learn, especially around West Auckland or in Auckland with your water areas. Talking to parents also helped to dispel a lot of concern about their children's participation. That was the good thing about talking to the parents and saying, well, what's the problem, how can we help? And they said, look, they don't want to do this or they can't do that. I said, that's not a problem, we can fix that. So I think it's just that compromise and um, just making the parents feel comfortable about their children being in there. Um, you know, and some of them didn't know that there was a shallow end and a deep end and they can just sit there and, and you know, get confident. There was also things around glue ear for some of the children that was coming up and we can't, they can't go in the water because they have glue ear and different health issues. So we tried to just let the parents know, look, they can even sit in the shallow part of the pool just to be able to kick their feet in because they, that was always their experience that, well, I've got this and I've got that, I can't go in the water. And of course, if they haven't been in the water, they're going to be um, less confident. So we tried to put over cross parents, let them bring their togs. We won't make them swim or put their head in it. They can just go in there and and sit in the, in the shallow part of the pool. As a further effort to build community support and enthusiasm for the aquatics program, the school integrated its annual Meet the Parent Night with an aquatics night, where students and their families were encouraged to participate in activities involving water. We called it a H2O night, I think it was, um, all around water. So we had a water slide on the field, we had um, bobbing for apples, water activities, uh, we had a big board where the teachers or the children stuck their heads through and they threw sponges of water and things like that. Uh, then we had a celebration around the pool where we put a barbecue area up and had um, games for the adults and the children in the pool. And we also had uh, Jan Taylor from WaterSafe. Um, Surf Life Saving came in and set up an area in the hall just talking to the parents about why they need to get in the water. During the floods, you all... The whole event was highly successful and some of the experts later returned to school to work with teachers on a professional development program in teaching aquatics. Appropriate resources were accessed and shared between staff members to ensure consistency and confidence. And armed with this knowledge, teachers assessed their pupils' water skills. From this, they were able to set goals and, with their colleagues, develop teaching plans that ran for eight weeks. At the end of this time, they were able to again survey students and parents. The survey showed a significant growth in participation by students and suggested to staff adjustments that could be made to make further gains. 
Student confidence around water had also grown. We had a year six child that was just really scared of the pole and um, by the end of it they were going to all the choice sessions that there were at lunchtime. So there's that kind of stuff, it's really, really neat to see the progress. And I had really positive feedback from teachers saying to me, I feel much more confident teaching aquatics, I feel better about it, so, and that's just neat. 